Hello guys. So while trying to figure out how SDL GPU uniform buffers work, I found myself learning raw Vulkan. And what can I say? Well, it's definitely really low level, uh, really verbose and actually quite difficult to figure out. But at the same time, once you get the hang of the basic concepts, it's actually pretty straightforward to use. For me, the additional layer of difficulty and confusion comes from the fact that the API is huge and it's also constantly evolving. And there are multiple ways of doing the same thing with different benefits and trade-offs. Also, it doesn't help that uh, most of the beginner tutorials online are quite outdated and there are more modern features that make life easier. So in this series, I'm gonna try implementing a very basic renderer using a somewhat modern subset of Vulkan features that I recently learned about myself. And I guess one important disclaimer is that I'll be targeting PC and not mobiles or Mac OS, uh, because those are different areas of knowledge that I don't really have yet. Um, they have their own quirks with regard to Vulkan. So the main thing that you have to accept with Vulkan is that there is no defaults or real shortcuts. So drawing a even a single triangle is actually quite a lot of work. But the good news is that you need to write a bunch of setup code and some basic abstractions once, and then everything else gets simpler. Not easier, but at least simpler. I also think that the experience of setting everything up manually is actually great for learning. So let's do it. So let's create a basic setup. I'll just set the main Odin file into the SRC folder. And I'm gonna use this just tool for building, which is like make, but simpler. So I'm gonna add a just file. You can of course use whatever build system you want. Something like this for the building. Let's set up a basic logger and make sure we get a hello world working. Seems to work. Now, Vulkan, as they say, is not a graphics API, but rather a GPU API which means that it's less about drawing pictures on the screen and more about sending commands to the GPU. In fact, even the API for presenting things on the screen surface is not part of the core, but rather an official extension. Basically, this means that we need to create the window and provide the drawing surface ourselves. And we can do this using the OS API or some cross-platform libraries like SDL or GLFW. And I'm gonna use GLFW since a pretty minimalistic library that give us exactly what we need. And it's also a part of Odin vendor collection. So let's just import it and start using it. First, we want to initialize GLFW, but before that, it makes sense to set the error callback to print any errors using our logger and not handle them for every call. This is done using this set error callback function. That will be the first thing we do. And you can see it takes this error proc callback, which is a native C function. So we can set it up here. But to use the logger, we of course need the context because uh, C functions are not Odin functions and uh, they don't have the access to the context. So we need to set the context before we can use any of the Odin functions. So let's maybe introduce a structure for globals and a variable to hold that structure that will hold Odin context, which is of type runtime context. We need, of course, to import runtime. Now we can have a global variable of this type, something like G, and we can simply store the context after the initialization. Now back in the error callback, we will set the context to our stored one, and now we can use the logger. Something simple like this should work. Now the next thing to do is initialize the library, just like this, that returns a boolean of whether it was initialized or not. So we can quickly check and return earlier if something fails horribly. This will print the error, so we don't need to do anything else. What we need to do though is uh, defer the termination of the library, just like this, very simple. The next thing to do is of course, creating the window. For this create window function that takes width, height, title, and some additional handles that we can simply ignore and set to nil for simplicity. Just like this. And that gives us a window handle that we can store in globals because we will need it later. Let's add it to the structure. Let's maybe check if it's not nil and return if it is and defer the destruction of the window. Next, let's set up a very basic 
main loop. So like this, for the window should not close, we will process our frames. While we are here, uh, maybe a good thing to do at the beginning of the frame is free the uh, temporary allocator of Odin that we are gonna use just like this. Another thing that we want to call every frame is the GLFW pull event procedure that will process all the incoming window events and input events and whatnot. And with this, we can already run our application, see the window and close it and the application will be successfully terminated. Now we can proceed working with actual Vulkan, so let's import it. Let's alias the module SVK. And the first thing that we need to do to use any of the Vulkan API is to create an instance. An instance is basically what represents Vulkan in your application, so to say. This is done using the create instance function. But if you take a look at how it's defined, this is actually just a global variable of the procedure type like this, which means that uh, this needs to be initialized. And basically all the Vulkan functions are like that. Uh, they need to be loaded first dynamically uh, before we can use it. But thankfully this is very easy. So GLFW actually provides us with a function to load uh, Vulkan API for us. And this is what we can pass to the special function in the binding that loads all the so-called global procedures, which includes create instance. This is done using this uh, load proc addresses global helper function, and that takes a function pointer as a row pointer uh, that is actually provided by GLFW. Like this one, get instance proc address. Uh, this is a function that the load proc addresses global can call uh, to get the function pointers to all the global Vulkan functions. Now we need to cast it to row pointer. And after that, we can maybe assert that it was loaded by checking if create instance is not nil, something like this. And of course, this has to go before the main loop. So let's just move it here. Now here we are delving into the land of Vulkan API. And there's a number of conventions that we need to learn and get used to because they are very consistent through the whole API. And as I mentioned before, the Vulkan API is pretty verbose. So it might make sense to start extracting stuff into separate procedures uh, just to keep our sanity. So let's create a create instance procedure and take a look at the VK create instance signature. So we can see that it takes a pointer to the instance create infrastructure first. And these argument structures are very common in the Vulkan API, especially when it comes to the object creation. The second argument is the allocation callbacks. And this is something that you can provide if you want to control memory uh, for anything that Vulkan creates on the CPU side. Basically, any objects that need some memory to store their data can be managed by this. And thankfully, in this case, there's a default allocator uh, in Vulkan. So we can ignore this and actually pass new. The third argument is the pointer to the result of the call. And this is also very, very common. Uh, most of the Vulkan function use this out arguments to return the results. And the actual return value of a function is this result enum. And it can be a success or one of the other values that are not necessarily a failure. And what results you can expect from any particular function is described in the Vulkan spec. So if we, for example, open the section about VK create instance, we can see the documentation about it, including which return codes are success and which are failure. In general, when working with Vulkan, it's a very good idea to have the spec open all the time. Uh, that's it for the huge part of the API success is the only successful result and everything else is a failure. So people often create a common procedure for error checking. So let's do that as well. Let's just have this VK check procedure that takes the result and also the color location, which is an Odin feature that uh, just passes a location as an argument that we can use for logging. So we can do something like this. If result is not success, then just panic uh, printing the error and the location of the call. Now we can wrap the create instance call uh, in the VK check like this. We'll, we'll be doing this all the time. And now we need to supply the create info callbacks and the instance pointer for the result value. Let's create the create infrastructure. 
I tend to use some abbreviations here like CI for create info because in Vulkan you will be doing quite a lot of create infos. And one of the most important things that you need to know about the Vulkan structures is that most of them have this S type and P next fields. And basically the S type is something that you have to specify all the time. And the value of this S type needs to be uh, basically the enum value that indicates the structure type. So for example, for the instance create info, we would use this instant create info value. Let's do it like this. Now, this looks pretty stupid, uh, but this is needed uh, because the Vulkan API is designed to be extensible. And this pnext is a pointer to some other structure that you can pass to extend the instance create information and supply additional information for extensions or layer configuration that we will look into a bit later. And since this is a raw pointer, the Vulkan implementation will actually use the S type, which is always the first field, to figure out what structure to expect as an extension. And because this is a C API, it doesn't have any built in reflection. So this is how it figures out the structure type and how to process it. So yeah, this is slightly annoying, but you have to get used to that. Now we can pass the pointer to our instance CI as the first argument. We will pass nil as allocation callbacks, and we will store the instance in our global structure. So G instance like this. Let's also add it here. And this VK instance is a type of handle, which is basically just a pointer, but it's nicely typed. So this would be the bare minimum to create a Vulkan instance. We should probably defer the destruction of the Vulkan instance. Just like this, we pass the instance and the same allocation callbacks that we passed here. Uh, so the object will be destroyed and the Vulkan API will be shut down. However, as you can see, the destroy instance is yet another function pointer. It's not initialized by the load, uh, load proc address global procedure. Because to initialize uh, most of the instance related Vulkan API, we actually need the instance first. And to initialize the rest of the API, we will use another helper function called load proc addresses instance that will just take the instance that we already have. And I guess it makes sense to do another assert that the instance API is indeed loaded by just checking if destroy instance is there. Now, if we take a look at the create infrastructure again, it has the application info field as well as enabled layers and enabled extensions. So the application info is another structure with S type and pnext. And here you can specify the application name and version, the engine name and version. Uh, this is not uh, super relevant for us right now, but this API version is actually what defines which Vulkan API to use. And by now there are four different versions like 1.0, to 1.4 and I'm gonna use the 1.3 version which I think is kind of safe to target at least for the desktop platforms so we will set that to 1.3 but first let's take a look at uh, the layers and extensions the layers are basically a mechanism to add some additional proxies to all the Vulkan API to do some additional tracking or error checking or some kind of reporting and we're gonna use that later and the extensions are just uh, API extensions that are specific to the whole instance which is something that we are gonna also use and this is another common convention in the Vulkan API is that you have the count as u32 of something and then just a pointer to whatever stuff that you want to pass and the amount of elements at this location, at this pointer, uh, has to be exactly the same as the count that you pass. Because C doesn't have slices, but thankfully in Odin we do have slices with lengths. So we can just create a slices for extensions and layers, and then just pass the length and the raw data uh, to this pointer. So let's do exactly that. So we can define them like this. For now let's have them as empty just like this for the layers and for the extensions. And 
we will see this pattern in more places so also better get used to that and let's also specify the API version that we want. So here I define the application infrastructure directly and just take a pointer to it. Don't forget the S type and specify the uh, API version for which we have a nice constant. And with that, we have the very basic Vulkan API initialized. I think that's it for this video. In the next video, we will set up a validation layer, which is really a must have tool when working with Vulkan because it will catch all the invalid usages of the API and print out some errors, which is really, really helpful. So stay tuned.